U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced more than $700 million in aid for Ukraine during a visit to Kiev, aiming to bolster the energy grid that Russia has repeatedly pounded ahead of what's expected to be a difficult winter. The announcement came on Wednesday at a news conference with Ukrainian Foreign Minister Andriy Sibiha and British Foreign Secretary David Lammy. Blinken said the assistance also would provide humanitarian support and pay for mine removal operations. The $325 million in energy support in the package will help repair and restore Ukraine's power generation facilities, provide emergency backup power and strengthen the physical security of energy infrastructure. The Foreign Secretary and I came to Ukraine today to really hear from our partners how we can continue to work together to help Ukraine defend its people, defend its territory through the fall fighting season into the winter as Putin continues his vicious war of aggression. And also how to continue to set up Ukraine for success as a strong, independent country for the long term. It's important that the Ukrainian people continue to hear directly from us. We remain fully committed to Ukraine's victory, to not only ensuring that Ukraine can defend itself today, but can stand on its own feet strongly, militarily, economically, democratically, for many, many days ahead, to securing the path the Ukrainian people have chosen toward greater integration in the Euro-Atlantic community, including the European Union and NATO, to getting a just and lasting peace. The bottom line is this. We want Ukraine to win. And we're fully committed to keep marshalling the support that it needs for its brave defenders and citizens to do just that. Now, support for Ukraine will endure because it doesn't depend on any one country, any one party, any one election. Here today, the United States, the United Kingdom, are united in support of Ukraine and its success. But we're united along with dozens of other countries, including the enduring coalition of more than 50 countries that have provided more than $100 billion in security aid to Ukraine since February of 2022 and continue to materially support Ukraine today. Our message, our collective message to Putin is clear. Our support will not wane. Our unity will not break. Putin will not outlast the coalition of countries committed to Ukraine's success, and he is certainly not going to outlast the Ukrainian people. They've never wavered in their belief that they, and they alone, will decide their future. As we're meeting here today, we're again seeing Putin dust off his winter playbook, targeting Ukrainian energy and electricity systems to weaponize the cold against the Ukrainian people. That's why today we're announcing $325 million in new funding to help repair Ukraine's energy and electric grid. And we'll rally additional support from the G7 plus countries when we have a meeting of the Energy Coordination Group in the next couple of weeks. I'm also announcing today $290 million in new humanitarian support to help provide vital services like safe drinking water, food, shelter, medicine to millions of people in Ukraine and around the region who've been displaced by Putin's war. And finally, we're announcing $102 million in additional funding in humanitarian demining to help remove landmines, and unexploded ordnance that Russia's left behind across Ukraine. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and British Foreign Secretary David Lammy have arrived in Kiev on a joint visit as Ukraine presses the West to allow it to use long-range missiles against Russia. The top diplomats reached the Ukrainian capital on Wednesday hours after the U.S. presidential debate during which Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Trump sparred over the two-and-a-half-year war in Ukraine. Blinken traveled from London, where he accused Iran of providing Russia with FAF 360 short-range ballistic missiles, calling the move a dramatic escalation of Russia's military campaign. For months, Ukraine has been requesting approval to use long-range weapons from the United States and Western allies to strike targets in Russia, and is expected to press harder given Russia's latest reported weapons acquisition. Wednesday's visit comes ahead of British Prime Minister Keir Starmer's upcoming trip to Washington, where he will meet President Joe Biden at the White House on Friday. 
Russian airstrikes, mostly aimed at crippling Ukraine's energy infrastructure, have intensified in recent weeks with nightly missile and drone attacks.